You want me to put that on my todger? This one's wife. Their inevitable descent. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Many of you who have been involved with a narcissist often experience a sense of impotence. Commonly, for instance, where you have been ensnared in a romantic entanglement with a narcissist and that narcissist has got rid of you, ending the relationship, you're often left distraught, puzzled, bewildered. How did something that was so wonderful go wrong? You gave your all to this relationship, love that individual, that you were happy, and then, for reasons that you'd yet to work out, it went wrong. You thought that perhaps it could be redeemed. After all, things were once wonderful and you could get back to that. And yet, all of a sudden, you're left dumped in the dirt. Perhaps suffering from trauma, perhaps suffering physical injury, your finances shredded by the uncaring narcissist, and there is the narcissist, riding off into the sunset, nary a glance in your direction, often now with somebody new. Where is the justice in all of that? Where is the fairness? How can it be that the narcissist can just carry on, not caring about you, being so cold and callous, and you are the one that's left, ruining the loss of the relationship, hurting? You are the one contemplating what has gone on. The narcissist doesn't seem to care, doesn't even seem to acknowledge you any longer. How is that fair? That, commonly, is the experience of many people who've been ensnared by a narcissist in a romantic situation. But the point is that whilst the narcissist does not indeed care about that individual and does carry on like nothing has happened, that relationship is going to fall by the wayside in the fullness of time because they always do. And the fact is that for the less evolved narcissist, which includes Harry's wife, there is always going to be some form of come down, some kind of problem. Of course, her narcissism protects her against it by failing to recognize that she is the problem and blaming it on everybody else. But at the end of the day, a narcissist such as this one's wife is not going to be able to escape the fact that more and more people don't want anything to do with her. She will not be able to escape the fact that the money is being reduced. She will not be able to escape the fact that the opportunities are simply not there. She will not be able to escape the fact that she is in that downward spiral. Naturally, she will not accept that it's any fault of hers, and her narcissism is likely to drive her to get rid of Harry and replace him with somebody new, as I've explained to you previously, thus riding off into the sunset and leaving Harry with all the financial problems, and that she starts to bleed somebody else dry. But the fact is, I, some time ago, told you about this downward spiral that has occurred for the Sussexes, and in particular this one's wife, and others have picked up on it also, including The Standard, through Melanie McDonough, who reports this one's wife embarrassing cameo shows she and Prince Harry have begun their inevitable descent. More evidence that more and more individuals are cottoning on to the fact that it's all gone wrong for the Sussexes. The miracle of the latest advertisement for Clever, see parts pass him, a mission-driven women-led wellness brand which sells revolting-sounding powdered coffee, is that it features this one's wife doing actual work. The Duchess of Sussex is seen packing boxes, making hot drinks and doing something or other on a computer before doing a mock fist bump and exiting off screen. This is the last contact she'll have with manual labour, but what this Instagram ad does show is that this one's wife returning to her profession, acting in order to bolster her new endeavour, investing. Three years ago, she invested an undisclosed sum in Clever, see parts past him as to what that actually was, a product that I personally love and has a holistic approach to wellness, she said. Duly, she sent a basket of Clever products to her neighbour, Oprah Winfrey, bribery, the attempt to assert control, and Oprah very obligingly promoted the company online, residual benefit. That's how these things work. 
But who knows? Perhaps latte powder isn't quite the investment needed to sustain the Sussexes' fortune, now that they're living a life of financial independence from the royal family. For what do they, or rather she, have to sell, other than the residual fairy dust from their title and connections? The couple's Christmas card, though obviously this being this one's wife, they wished everyone a very happy holiday season instead, which I can tell you right now wouldn't have been the thing to send the late Queen, it was not just from them, but from the Archwell Foundation and Archwell Productions. And the reality is that neither is faring terribly well. One of the two revelations from Omid Scobie's terrible book, Bell End Game, the second being that the king feels sympathy for his brother Andrew, is the extent of the Sussexes' financial difficulties. That deal with Spotify, which was meant to set them up, it went nowhere. Only one of the couple's ideas made it to production, and one unkind executive of the company called them grifters. This one's wife's proposed podcast, Archetypes, did not run. More recently, their local paper turned on them. The Hollywood Reporter numbered the couple among this year's leading losers. After a whiny Netflix documentary, a whiny biography, spare even the title is a pouty gripe, and an inert podcast, the Harry and this one's wife brand swelled into a sanctimonious bubble, just begging to be popped, and South Park was the pin. South Park, it satirised the couple's worldwide privacy tour. As for Prince Harry's latest victory over the Mirror Group, it may have confirmed him in his own estimation as a fighter of dragons, but it won't actually pay their extensive bills. It's hard not to feel some, some sympathy for Harry, who could have led a decent life, focusing on helping military veterans, whom he does have a fellow feeling for. This is demonstrative of his emotional empathy. The initiative to make for California and live the celebrity life without the graft did not come from him. Looking at him in the final bit of the crown, he did have grounds for anger. The displacement of his mother by Camilla isn't something he took well. He's entitled to feel aggrieved by the way his want unwanted stepmother did not just help destroy his parents' marriage, but has blotted out his mother's memory. For this one's wife, being reduced to an extra in an Instagram ad, is not what she had in mind when she cut her husband loose from the royal family. She intended to monetize her title and royal husband, and it's turned out to be harder than she thought. The only way is down from here. In a career that has been characterized by a ruthless upward mobility, who knows what indignities the pair will be up for as they try to maintain their large estate and their staff. Let's hope this one's wife is at least kind to Harry as they start their descent. Those are the observations by Melanie McDonough in The Standard, another journalist picking up on the descent. Of course, not realising that there's not going to be any kindness exhibited towards Harry by this one's wife because she will repeatedly blame him for their trials and tribulations. But another article that demonstrates the widespread knowledge that the end has begun for these two. The downward spiral that I predicted a long time ago is gathering pace, and that more and more people now see all of the behaviours stacked up and start to realise just how unpleasant this one's wife is and just how useless that she is also. The decline is inevitable. So is their descent into obscurity. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.